like to introduce our uh, Eldorado County Fair Board member, Mr. Tom Davis, also our representative from the South Lake Tahoe District 5, District 5 of our uh, Eldorado County, and he's going to read off the proclamation for us today. All right, top of the morning, everybody. Whereas the Eldorado County Fair is a vital part of our community since the fair started in 1859, offering an opportunity to showcase the merit, talents, and industry of our citizens of all ages. Whereas the Eldorado County Fair honors our agricultural industry, which creates an estimated annual crop production of almost $59 million, which apples being our leading crop with 16.8 million, livestock second, and production 10.9, and wine, and wine is gaining, with 8 million. Whereas the 2017 theme of the fair is ribbons and rides. Whereas the Old Rona County Fair continues to encourage participation and recognition of the diverse accomplishments of the Old Rona County's youth through an innovative partnership with the Old Rona County Office of Education, Future Farmers of America, University of California, Cooperative Extensions, and the Fair Association. We're almost there. Whereas the Eldorado County Fair enriches the public's knowledge of the world around them through educational exhibits such as the County Museum, Master Food Preservers, the Junior Livestock Auction, and the Ag-Related uh, Featured Booths. And whereas the Eldorado County Fair fosters increased cultural awareness, appreciation of the arts, providing the venue for the exhibit exhibits of dance, music, art, and photography. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of South Lake Tahoe, which is in El Dorado County, does hereby proclaim the week of June 15th through Father's Day, June 18th, Ribbons and Rides in the El Dorado County Fair at 100 Placid Hill Drive. City Council extends its thanks to the many volunteers whose dedication is an essential part of the success of our annual county fair. The City of South Lake Tahoe extends their best wishes to the Board of Directors and staff for a successful fair. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Tom Davis from South Lake Tahoe. At this time, we'd like to introduce Mr. Clarici, our uh, Plashville City Mayor, to come read the uh, city's proclamation. All right. Hello. Uh, proclamation of the City Council of the City of Plashville recognizing June 15 through 18, 2017 as El Dorado County Fair Week. Here's the proclamation. Okay. Um, the fair is great. Go have a good time. Spend lots of money. Whatever the ribbons and whatever is fantastic. We are so proud to host the county fair here in the city of Placerville. Go out. Do your thing. You don't want to hear me talk. It's too hot outside. So anyway, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Last but not least, we'd like to have Mr. Brian Beerkamp come up representing the Eldorado County Board of Supervisors. Thanks, Tiffany. Thanks to everybody for being here. We appreciate it very much on behalf of the Eldorado County Board of Supervisors and all you that are getting hot out here. We want to go ahead and get this, kick this off, but please come out, tell your friends, enjoy the fair. We've got our 4-H auction to support on Saturday. Uh, John M. Sudebick and Will Brace the Sunday night. Great entertainment Sunday night also. I might be some entertainment, but I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a great opportunity to come out and support the fair, support the community. Thanks to the fair board members and Jody and everybody for all your hard work. We appreciate it and all of our partners. So let's cut the ribbon. Cut the ribbon. Competition who just cut our uh, opening ceremony ribbons to kick off our 2017 El Dorado County Fair. So with that, we hope everybody has a, a great day, great opening day. Enjoy the parade with the fire truck going around, and let's kick off a great weekend for our two celebrations. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Hi, I'm Sam Bradley. I'm a director at the Eldorado County Fair and welcome everybody to come down here and have some fun with the kids and, and uh, some adult fun. But uh, we'll be looking for you. Thank you. The Eldorado County Fair! 
Well, or something like that. Something like Hiya, that. Hiya, mister!
my name is Pam Hubner and I'm a volunteer at the El Dorado County Historical Museum and we are uh, we want to invite you to kind of come and to the museum and look because we've changed some of our exhibits this is the 100th anniversary of the United States entry into World War one and we became pretty curious about how that impacted El Dorado County and what our part in the war effort would be so as we uh, go through some of the exhibits that have been here we've changed a lot of the exhibits to reflect El Dorado County's participation in the war effort so we can look at the, mu the museum's collection of artifacts in terms of uh, World War I uniforms and the stories of the men who were wearing them and we have a, a Red Cross uniform and the story of the Red Cross and how many of our young women became members of the Red Cross and served either overseas or in the home front. The Red Cross was very busy. They worked under the auspices of the War Department, so they had lots of different things that they were doing here in the county as well as in the nation and abroad. And we also had people who were volunteering with the YMCA Women's Division. And as we go around toward the back porch, you'll see how the county was uh, asked to, to increase food production, to have home gardens, to raise produce, and to preserve it by canning or drying or whatever method is necessary. The school children were involved by, they were asked to grow beans so that they could produce at least one pound of dried beans per student and they were asked to collect fruit pits and um, the fruit pits were used they were sent to the Red Cross the Red Cross sent them to an incinerator in New York because the fruit pit um, ashes the um, charcoal was found to be the best for producing gas masks for the soldiers in World War one in France um, you'll also find that in the pharmacy there were soldiers who were dying um, in service but of non-combat injuries like the Spanish flu influenza the pneumonia measles and mumps which we don't think about a lot today because we have vaccines and we have penicillin but we lost a lot of people that way so the those are the kinds of things we were interested in. We'd encourage you to come to the museum, see all the changes in the exhibits. We have a wonderful exhibit about the dresses that women were wearing for dressy occasions and how as the war went on they were asked not to be taking precious cloth and um, to buy serviceable things and not buy clothing unless they were replacing something. So there was a whole rationing of sugar and materials that were needed for the war effort.